Welcome, survivors. I'm Frugal McGee, and today we're playing Project Zomboid, a zombie apocalypse game where death is permanent. How did this catastrophic event happen? No one knows. Some say patient zero escaped confinement. Others say it's just a virus that can be cured with proper medicine. And others say the world is ending, and we're all doomed. Jeff Jenkins was a burger flipper at the local Spiffo's. One night, as he was getting off, he noticed that some things didn't feel right. When Jeff made it home, he noticed strangers walking, confused and disoriented. He went to bed, thinking everything would be okay. As the night went on, he heard moans and scratching. The next morning, he was getting ready for work when he heard banging on the front door. When he went to answer the door, he only heard gurgling sounds. He escaped out of the back door and ran to his neighbor's house. Unfortunately, they had moved out hastily. This is where our story begins. Day one is typically one of the harder days in Zomboid. You have no weapons, no food, and unfortunately for Jeff, this house is completely bare except for a few odds and ends. Nothing real useful at this stage of the adventure. Going outside, Jeff discovers the first of the undead monsters. With no weapon in hand, he has to try to take the zombie out. It was a bit of a struggle, but fortunately, Jeff was able to get the better of him. After a bit of walking, Jeff finds another zombie, and there's another one following close behind. He's got to take these guys out one at a time if he's going to have any hope of securing the perimeter. While foraging, another zombie takes notice and engages. He takes out another one, and still no weapons to be found. He doesn't know how much longer he can keep up at this pace. Success. Early foraging has yielded two tree branches, which can be used to make two spears, as long as he can find a knife. Jeff then began clearing out all of his old neighbors. Mary, Paula, Jim, other Jim, Brad, and what's his name? A crashed ambulance nearby. Could provide some useful resources for us, even though there's a few zombies guarding it. Jeff was able to jimmy the lock to the window, revealing our very first house to loot. This could come in handy. And torch should definitely come in handy at night. A few bits of food to stay full, which is nice, and also some ice cream to help keep our weight up. The rest of the house doesn't yield much, so Jeff moves on. Jeff accidentally pulls a couple of Zeds away from the ambulance crash, which could prove useful. Chip. Dale. After squashing another one, Zara, Jeff comes across a junkyard. Jeff finds a screwdriver, which is a good find. He's also hoping to find many other tools that he's going to need for his journey. The junkyard is pretty well guarded by a lot of the undead. Even without a weapon, Lee, Jeff does manage to get some success. Uh oh. Jeff managed to attract a fairly large number of them, and he still has no weapon, other than a letter opener he managed to find. Fairly useless. Jeff manages to find some fishing equipment, which would be very handy if he can find a lake or a stream to fish in. Jeff doesn't find much else useful in some of the other cars, but he's got to kind of hurry up because there are zombies coming. Jeff decides to jump this fence so that he can make an escape. Jeff manages to find Jim Bob and Bob Jim. Jim Bob. Bob Jim. Sam. A couple of tree branches is another great find. However, Jeff still needs a knife so he can make spears. Jill. Day one has been fairly successful so far, despite missing quite a few things. Now what Jeff really needs to concentrate on is clearing a house to make his own. 
Jeff scopes the place out to make sure there aren't any undead that he can see, at least not too many, before making an entry through a side window. He fills up his water bottles and finds a frying pan. This could make as a useful early weapon. Perhaps this is my new home, Jeff thinks to himself while watching an episode of Woodcraft. This will help him in his carpentry along the way. Jeff also finds Foraging Volume 1 on the bookshelf. This will definitely help him level up all of his foraging abilities. Another good thing for Jeff is there is no window in this bedroom, making it a fairly safe location to sleep. The day is still a bit young, and Jeff has more searching he needs to do, so he decides to put the book down and head back out for a little more scavenging before it gets dark. Jeff has been very fortunate in the spacing of these zombies. He's managed to have to only fight one or two at a time, not a whole horde yet. After disposing of another troublemaker, Jeff can go see what's in that little tool shed over there. Pete, Jeff, but he spells it G-E-O-F-F. -F. After circling the shed, he manages to pop open a window. And ha ha, treasure abounds, a generator. Jeff marks his map. He's gonna need to remember this spot for later on. Jeff even finds a crowbar, but it doesn't dawn on him that he can use that as a weapon. And a hammer as well. And a trowel for farming later on. Jeff begins getting excited and breaks into the next house so that he can loot it. He proceeds with caution. You never know if a zombie is hiding around a corner. He finds an empty cooking pot and fills it with water. This will come in handy later on. He places the cooking pot on the countertop so that way it doesn't weigh him down too much. After a quick sweep of the house, Jeff doesn't really find much. Jeff then takes a quick glance across the road and notices three zombies. He decides not to engage at this time. Just one stray zombie? No worries here, Jeff thinks. Not a whole lot of loot off of any of these bodies, but maybe this house will have something nice. All of a sudden, uh oh. Now I've got a real problem on my hand, Jeff thinks. Maybe I can lose them in the woods. Going through these woods, I can break a line of sight. No worries, I'll just lose them in here and we'll be golden. Another close call for Jeff. The plan succeeds and now Jeff is clear of that small horde. Another straggler on my way home. There's a couple more that are hanging around the home base. Jeff's gonna have to deal with those if he's gonna have a good night's sleep. Dave. Ow. Hey, cut out. Ow. Oh. No. Ow. Pretty good day one, Jeff thinks. He had a bit of a rough time, but remains uninjured. Not a lot of weaponry, but still hopeful. Now's a good time to read the foraging book and put away all the extra loot I've gotten and get ready for the next day. Maybe day two will be better. Thank you so much for joining me today as we go on Jeff's adventure. Please stay tuned for part two, which will be released probably in the next few days. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about this new series. It may be a little bit different, but it's still a lot of fun. And I'm hoping you're enjoying it so far. Remember to take care of yourself and take care of others. Bye-bye.